to another lesson as we cover pain management. Effective pain management connects the use of pharmacological and non-pharmacological pain management therapies. In order to promote patient quality care, in this video you will learn adequate assessment and management of pain. It is important to note that nurses have a priority responsibility for the continual assessment of the client's pain level and to provide individualized interventions. The nurse will need to reassess pain 10 to 60 minutes after administering medication. Physiology of pain There are two types of pain, which are nociceptive pain and neuropathic pain. Nociceptive pain involves transduction, transmission, perception and modulation of impulses generated by nociceptors located throughout the body. Stimuli following tissue damage from cuts, burns, tumour growth or chemicals trigger these nociceptors to send a message to the nervous system. Neuropathic pain is caused by changes in the peripheral or central nervous system. Assessment of pain What is pain? Well, pain is whatever the person experiencing it says it is, and it exists whenever the person says it does. The client's report of pain is the most reliable diagnostic measure of pain. There are a variety of pain scales that feature images, numbers, intensity indicators and descriptive words, and in various languages. Pain is categorized by duration, acute or chronic, or by pathology, nociceptive or neuropathic. Guidelines for assessing pain Assess and document pain, which is also known as the fifth vital sign, according to the client's condition and agency guidelines. Use a focused assessment to obtain subjective data. Risk factors Risk factors for under-treatment of pain include cultural and societal attitudes, lack of knowledge, fear of addiction. Populations at risk for under-treatment of pain include infants, children, older adults, clients who have substance use disorder. Causes of acute and chronic pain include trauma, arthritis, cancer, tumour invasion, nerve compression, bone metastasis, associated infections, immobility, surgery. Factors that affect the pain experience include age, for example like infants that cannot verbalise or understand their pain, or Older adult clients can have multiple pathologies that cause pain and limit function. Genetic sensitivity can increase or decrease pain tolerance. Cognitive function. Clients who are cognitively impaired might not be able to report pain or report it accurately. Expected findings. Behaviours can be indicators and assist in pain assessment of non-verbal clients with the use of assessing facial expressions, Grimacing, wrinkled forehead, body movements, restlessness, pacing, guarding, moaning, crying, decreased attention span, blood pressure, pulse and respiratory rate can temporarily increase with acute pain. Eventually, increases in vital signs will stabilize despite the persistence of pain. Therefore, physiologic indicators might not be an accurate measure of pain over time. Patient-centered care Nursing care. Incorporate pharmacological and non-pharmacological methods into the plan of care. Consider the client's preferences. Determine the client's need for scheduled analgesia, such as for chronic or post-operative pain. Plan to pre-medicate the client prior to painful procedures, such as repositioning, wound care, invasive diagnostic testing. Non-pharmacological pain management. Non-pharmacological pain strategies help to improve coping by relieving stress associated with pain. These strategies can assist clients in reducing the number of pharmacological interventions for pain and are particularly helpful when clients cannot take pain medication. Non-pharmacological strategies include mind-body practices, yoga, chiropractic manipulation, cognitive approaches, meditation, distraction, natural products, herbs, oils. Pharmacological interventions. 
Analgesics are used for relieving pain. For immediate, short-term relief of pain, the parenteral route is best. Administer non-opioid analgesics first, progressing through weak opioids to stronger ones to manage pain. Expect to administer IV analgesia immediately post-operatively and to transition clients to oral medication as pain is managed properly through the post-operative period. When transitioning clients from IV to oral analgesia, a larger dose is required for oral dosing because the full dose of medication does not reach the bloodstream. Clients experiencing acute pain receive doses that are gradually titrated down until they can be comfortable with our medication or at a minimal dose. The three classes of analgesics, non-opioids, opioids and adjuvants. Non-opioid analgesics. Non-opioid analgesics are appropriate for treating mild to moderate pain and are often added to opioids for treatment for more intense pain. Non-opioid analgesics also have antipyretic and anti-inflammatory properties. Non-opioid analgesics are appropriate for treating mild to moderate pain and are often added to opioids for treatment for more intense pain. Acetaminophen is most often used, alone or in combination with other medications. Here are important things to consider when dealing with acetaminophen. Ensure the total amount of acetaminophen a client consumes daily does not exceed 4 grams for clients 50 kilos, 110 pounds or greater. It is safe to administer acetaminophen concurrently with NSAIDs, ibuprofen, aspirin, celecoxib, naproxen, ketorolac because the medications act in different ways. Important nursing actions for acetaminophen include assessing the client for liver disease, monitoring for hepatic damage, and monitoring liver function tests. The antidote for acetaminophen is acetylcysteine. Opioid analgesics Opioid analgesics are appropriate for treating moderate to severe pain. Opioid analgesics for moderate pain include tramadol, hydrocone, and codeine. Hydromorph, fentanyl, morphine, oxycodone or methadone are effective for more severe pain. Morphine is the opioid most used and other opioid effects are compared to the effects of morphine. Meperidine is no longer recommended for use, except in rare conditions at low doses. Check opioid formulations carefully to determine whether short-acting or modified release, extended release dose is indicated. For many opioids, the dose can be titrated upward progressively until the client experiences pain relief. However, upward titration increases the risk for adverse effects. Opioids are available in transdermal, transmucosal and buccal routes. It is essential to monitor and intervene for adverse effects such as the following. Constipation. Use a preventative approach monitoring stool softeners, stimulant laxatives, enemas, orthostatic hypotension. Advise clients to sit or lie down if lightheadedness or dizziness occur. Instruct clients to avoid sudden changes in position by slowly moving from a lying to a sitting or standing position. Provide assistance with ambulation. Urinary retention. Monitor INO. Assess for distension, administer bethanetol and catheterize. Nausea vomiting. Administer antiemetics, advise clients to lie still and move slowly and eliminate odors. Sedation. Monitor level of consciousness and take safety precautions. Sedation usually precedes respiratory depression. Respiratory depression. Monitor respiratory rate prior to and following administration of opioids. Initial treatment of respiratory depression and sedation is generally a reduction in opioid dose, if necessary. Adjuvant analgesics Adjuvant analgesics or coanalgesics, which enhance the effects of non-opioids, help alleviate other manifestations that aggravate pain and are useful for treating neuropathic pain. Adjuvant medications include the following. 
anticonvulsants, carmazepine, anti-anxiety agents, diazepam, tricyclic antidepressants, amitriptyline, antihistamine, hydroxyzin, glucocorticoids, dexamethasone, antiemetics, ondansetron, anesthetics, ketamine. Patient-controlled analgesia, PCA. PCA is a medication delivery system that allows clients to self-administer safe doses of opioids. Here are important considerations regarding PCA. Small, frequent dosing ensures consistent plasma levels. Morphine and hydromorphone are typical opioids for PCA delivery. Clients should let the nurse know if using the pump does not control the pain. To prevent inadvertent overdosing, the client is the only person who should push the PCA button, not a family member or anyone else. Complications Under-treatment of pain is a serious complication and can lead to increased anxiety with acute pain and depression with chronic pain. Assess clients for pain frequently and intervene as appropriate. Sedation, respiratory depression and coma can occur as a result of overdosing. Sedation always precedes respiratory depression. Identify high-risk clients, such as older adult clients. Carefully titrate doses while closely monitoring respiratory status. Stop the opioid and give the antagonist naloxone if respiratory rate is below 8 per minute and shallow or the client is difficult to arouse. The nurse should closely monitor the client following administration of naloxone. The duration of certain opioids can last longer than the effectiveness of the naloxone, creating a need for additional doses. Identify the cause of sedation. Use a sedation scale in addition to a pain rating scale to assess pain, especially when administering opioids. That ends this lesson on pain management. Check out our other nursing videos to help make studying easier. Also, see below for useful links that take you to NCLEX-style quizzes, nursing study guides and more.